Well, you know, when I was a Protestant investigating these issues, I didn't know anybody who had converted to the Catholic faith. It, it seemed like an impossible thing to do, honestly. Emotionally, it was difficult to think about becoming Catholic. I'd always been told that it was, you know, the enemy. And I, I met a fellow one time, a friend of mine, and we were talking. I said, where do you go to church? He says, well, I'm thinking of becoming Catholic. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I thought, you can actually do that? You can become a Catholic? You know, it seemed unbelievable to me. But after I joined the church, I began to find converts everywhere I looked. And in fact, uh, many of the most pious Catholics I know in all of the parishes are former Episcopalians, former Presbyterians, former Baptists. So they've become theology professors. They've become religious. They've become priests. They're everywhere. And, uh, and I've been very encouraged by the number of Protestants who have, in fact, entered yeah. the church and really brought their love for Scripture and their own experiences to the church. Sometimes better music. And sometimes better music. And, and, I, and I learned something that was interesting. As a Protestant, we often got ex-Catholics in our churches. And they would come in and, you know, they would join the Protestant church. And almost to a man... If you ask them, why, you know, why did you join the Protestant church? They'd say, well, I grew up Catholic, but I never really knew Christ. I didn't, I didn't know my faith. Uh, it didn't mean anything to me. It just seemed like empty ritual, that sort of thing. And I didn't find a living faith in Christ until I entered this Protestant church. But they admitted their basis in Catholicism was poor catechesis. They didn't know their Catholic faith. That's why they became Protestants. Every Protestant that I have known personally that has joined the Catholic faith has the opposite story. I was passionate in my faith. I was studying the Bible with all of my heart. I studied the church fathers with all my heart. I wanted to know truth, and it led me to the Catholic faith. Yeah. And it's, it's the opposite picture of what I found in the yeah, I think There's one core doctrine, one core idea that every Protestant ought to answer for themselves. Okay? And if, once you raise the question, I think it points you inevitably to the Catholic Church. How do you know what the Christian faith is? How do you know what the Christian faith is? Now, Instantly, the Protestant says, well, no, because the Bible tells me. All right, well, who told you that that's where you should go to answer this question? Who told you? Did Jesus tell us the Bible is our rule of faith? Right. Now, once you raise the question, instantly you know, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Jesus said that he was the final authority. He, he pr frequently mm -hmm. invoked his own authority over against that of the Old Testament. You've heard that it's written, but I say to you. Um, and then when he ascended into heaven, he gave that interpretive authority to his apostles. He said, I have all authority. You, therefore, go into all nations and make disciples. And whoever hears you, hears me. Whoever uh, rejects you, rejects me. And then the very earliest Christians understood that as referring to the apostolic succession of bishops. St. Ignatius of Antioch in the second century, quoting the Gospel of Luke, says, we have to hear those who Christ sent as Christ himself, namely the bishop. And so the question is, how do you know what the Christian faith is? Well, you know by looking to the rule of faith that Christ gave us. He gave us the teaching church, the magisterium of the teaching church, to answer that question. All you have to do is ask, did Jesus tell us the Bible alone? You can search the scriptures from cover to cover. You'll never find Jesus saying, if you have a, a doctrinal question, go to the Bible alone. No, he pointed us to no. the teaching church. And, and St. Paul in Second. Thessalonians 2.15 says, hold on to the traditions which I left you, Absolutely. whether by word or by letter. One of my favorite passages in the Church Fathers is from Tertullian, uh, the North African theologian. He writes a book called The Prescription Against Heretics. And then uh, he actually looks at this question, if I have a theological question, should I look to the Bible alone for an answer? He raises this as a possibility. Is the Bible alone a sufficient rule of faith? And he automatically says, no, he rejects that idea. Why? Well, for the obvious reason that different groups have different interpretations of Scripture. It, it, history shows it's not a sufficient rule of faith. How do you know what the Christian faith is? And Tertullian says, the only way you know is you go to the churches founded by apostles that are in apostolic succession. What is the faith that those churches teach and hold? That's the way you know what the Christian faith is. And it's only the interpretation of Scripture that lines up with that rule of faith that is to be accepted. And, of course, when you move to Irenaeus, he, he identifies the, the premier church, of course, is the Church of Rome. And to an probably answer his question, um, one book that is a, a, a way to get at some of this is Faith of the Early Fathers by Jurgens. It's three paperback volumes. You can get that from EW10ReligiousCatalog.com. Right. Um, 
and that three, those three volumes don't give much commentary, just what did the fathers of the church say? And it's a good introduction to the teachings of the fathers, and you can see whether... Uh, uh, J.N.D. Kelly's Early Christian Doctrine, yes, I think, is another good one. Yes, yes it is.